Grace and peace, friends and family. Welcome back. I'm Joy. I'm so thankful for you and I appreciate you for pressing play. While you press play to listen to me, don't forget to hit that like button as well as share this message if it resonates with you or you know somebody who can benefit from it. Welcome to our conversation for today. Before we do get started, I just want to take a moment to invite the ladies to join me at Bible, for Bible study when Queens convene. We meet every first Friday of the month at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. You can sign up at my website, pingirlteaches.com. You'll find it under When Queens Convene. We're going to be discussing Leah. And what a what an awesome lesson we are going to have. I've been looking forward to having this particular study. And also, let me just remind you to join me on Sunday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time so that we can continue to discuss narcissistic abuse from a biblical and a spiritual perspective. You know, one of the one of the one 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 key scripture that I want to focus on today comes from Romans chapter 12 verse 2. And what that says, it's a very familiar one, but it says do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Romans 12 and 2. You know, when we consider the word do not be conformed, what what essentially we are being told is not to be pressured, not to be pressed, to adapt to the value systems, the belief systems of this world, of this society and culture, wherever you are. You know, the Bible talks about God as being the potter and us the clay, and he molds us, he conforms us to how he wants us to be, meaning that he conforms us into his into his 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 view on the world his view on life his view on you know how we are as sons and daughters of god in come the narcissists and what do they do they come to press you they come to pressure you they come to cause you to adapt to their narcissistic world to their narcissistic harem to the fantasy that they have created in their minds and want you to begin to believe that this is real so here we can see very clearly how the narcissist steps in to try to be what like god we know that they are demigods they think of themselves as god they think that they are above god they are above his reproach what in actuality they are pagan gods and their leader the head honcho is the devil that is the one that empowers them that emboldens them and so when i use the term narcissist and i'm you you can probably picture the person that was this to you right i want you to go beyond that because we understand that we wrestle not against flesh and blood the spirit that is at work that spirit wants to make you conform and so what happens through narcissistic abuse which can be broken down as emotional abuse physical abuse verbal abuse um sexual abuse right through the word curses through the indoctrination through the love bombing through the grooming through the sleep deprivation all of those things highly demonic right but what what the goal of that is to get you to conform to the patterns of the narcissist's world. And when we say the narcissist world, right, I need you to understand that this is now the, to conform to the patterns of the demonic kingdom. But in order for this to happen, right, and I want you, just like I mentioned, God is the potter and shaping you. Understand that the narcissist mindset have been shaped by the devil and they have been trained by the devil. That's why we're always like, well, they all act the same because they all had the same demonic training. And so now in return here, they come to shape you to to cause confusion in your world, to cause you to think like they do, to cause you to be subjected, shaping you to perform what it is that they want you to be. That's why we see some people get caught up in these patterns and cycles for years and decades. And we wonder how can you stay there because that potter has been shaping the clay. And sometimes when the clay has been squeezed, think about the squeezing, the pressing to, to bend, and then their viewpoint becomes constricted. But what's so important is the Bible tells us that we are to offer ourselves as a living sacrifice to Christ. But that's kind of interesting because when we consider living sacrifice, we know sacrifices are killed. And so now we see how the narcissist tries to get you to conform by killing you, right? And I'm not talking about like um, in the literal sense, but I'm talking about mentally emotionally, psychologically, 
right? They come to destroy those things in you. And all of that, it would be your purpose, would be your destiny, would be your dreams, would be your passion, would be the very life of who you are. Like I said, when when a sacrifice is laid on an altar, right? It's killed. And we can see, especially in the season that we are in, it is resurrection season, right? Um, today is Thursday, so tomorrow is going to be Good Friday. We know what happened on, on Good Friday. Christ offered his life. He gave himself and he died on the cross for the remission of our sins. He became the sacrifice. It was through his shed blood that we are reconciled back to God. And so we are told which our, that our reasonable service as believers, right, is to present our bodies as a living sacrifice. So that means that we must become a living dead thing. Well, that kind of doesn't sound right. But let me tell you, when you are a living dead thing in Christ, you are alive. If we can look at Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, it says, I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who lives, but Christ lives in me. And the life I now have, I live, or the life I now live, in, in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Galatians 2 and 20. So we see that we become dead to the things of this world. That's how we are unable. That's how we do not conform to the patterns of this world. That's how we allow the potter, Jesus Christ, to shape us. To We become clay. We become putty in his hands, in the master's hands the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, just so that I'm clear, because we understand these pagan gods think that they are our master. They are not. That is deception. But when we are in the master's hands and we offer ourselves as a living sacrifice, we become dead to the things of this world. That's how we do not conform to the patterns of this world, right? But what happens? In come these pagan gods and they want you on their altar as a dead sacrifice, meaning you don't think for yourself. That's why narcissists don't want you to think. They don't want you to be a critical thinker. You must think. Just because you are a believer, it does not mean that you must not think, that you must not learn, that you must not grow. Seek knowledge. And when you get knowledge, seek understanding. The Bible tells us that in all our getting, we are to get understanding. That is the path to wisdom. And so what the narcissist does is that they come to lay you on this altar. And granted, it, it may it may not be a physical one, right? Because not every altar is physical, but they want you to offer yourself as a dead sacrifice. I hope you get what I'm saying. Because it's it, it almost looks like it would align with the word of God, but it's a lie straight from the pits of hell. You don't offer yourself as a dead sacrifice. We are told to offer ourselves as a living sacrifice. But in a, in a world with a narcissist, you offer yourself as a living sacrifice that becomes dead. You can no longer think for yourself. You can no longer govern your own, your own thoughts. You are no longer able to just be autonomous. The very things that we have in Christ is the restriction. And then once you become that dead sacrifice on their demonic altar, it shifts the entire trajectory of your life. Likewise, if we are a living sacrifice by the shed blood of Jesus Christ, the Messiah, we live. Remember, Galatians 2 and 20 says, I have been crucified with Christ and it is no longer I who lives, but Christ lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith. Remember, we walk by faith and not by sight, right? It says, I live by faith in the son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. What has the narcissist ever given up of themselves for you? Did they ever become a living sacrifice for you? Did they ever offer you sacrificial love? No. They want you to be the sacrifice. I want to encourage somebody today that if you are hearing me and you have been feeling pressed, if you are feeling pressured, if you are feeling like you are being molded to fit the world's view, because one thing about this world is it is highly narcissistic. It is highly narcissistic. I need you to understand that the, the savior of the world, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, gave his life for you. 
You do not have to be squeezed to accept what the narcissist said for you, said about you or did to you, how they made you feel. You do not have to be pressured to believe what shame says to you. You don't have to be pressed to believe what trauma, childhood trauma, the trauma of emotional abuse, the trauma of sexual assault, the trauma of, of narcissistic abuse. You don't have to believe those things. Those are experiences. They are lived experiences, but they are not the truth of who you are are. The enemy wants you to believe that you are defined by those things. The devil is a whole liar. I come and I talked to you today as somebody who did believe all the lies of the enemy, but I've chosen now to not only believe what God says about me, but to walk in his truth. I charge you now to believe who God says that you are and walk in his truth, fearless one. Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your minds. By the renewing of your mind, that you may be able to prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I want to thank you so much, fearless one, for spending some of your day with me today. It's my sincere prayer that this has blessed you, that it has inspired you, and that you are encouraged to continue to press towards the mark of a higher calling of God in Christ Jesus. Continue to come from behind and have a fantastic day. God bless you.